your I we are a lot of our sub questions were about like defining the terms that you were using, which I think is really important for yourself to define the terms that you're using. Like if you're using words or maybe abstract in some way that are kind of abstract in some way, because then if you understand it when you are if you're ever telling that question to someone else, you'll be able to know so they won't understand it unless I give them this along with it. Um, Ian, did you notice, did it, any of your sub-questions uncover assumptions? Because what, what I'm hearing you saying is that it may have uncovered some assumptions that you had. Or did sub-questions might have led to uncover some of the assumptions that were in your question you weren't aware of? Yeah, that, that did happen. Because there's a real, I think there's a real connection. As you deconstruct the larger question, the smaller questions, that helps to uncover the assumptions. And then, what did you learn about what? What did you learn about assumptions in, in the questions we asked? I actually found that um, when we were doing this question, that when I was looking for assumptions, it kind of brought up su uh, sub questions. Yeah. Also, it works both ways. Yeah. Like by trying to. Um, isolate certain ideas of the question and kind of make yourself aware of different types of questions and what assumptions that they may bring up. So it's hitting at the question at a deeper level, like a microscope. For me, uh, it was I felt like it was good to identify what all the assumptions were and then to decide, am I okay with having that assumption? Or am I not okay with having that assumption? And in some of them I was, and in some of them I was taken back and wanted to change it because of that. Meg Wheatley, I think you've read a poem about him, now we while we're here. She says, when somebody says something that surprises me, it often uncovers an assumption that I was holding. And that's such a great <coughs> gift, because then I can then decide whether I want to hold on to it or not. It's a choice. But unless you're aware of the assumption, you don't have the choice. So surfacing it is critical. What if you change the word assumption to belief? What's the difference between something you assume to be true and something you believe to be true? And I think assumptions, assumptions, I mean, sometimes they're much easier to like change because sometimes you can be like presented with a fact or something assumption, but beliefs even, you kind of believe it despite facts sometimes, like even though some people have said, well this is a certain way, you usually, you know, that's right. You, 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 um, do you think it's um, easier to let go of assumption? Do you think it's easy to let go of our assumptions even in the light of facts? I think they're, They seem much lighter than just believing in something. Like they can perform much quicker than beliefs. Well, I feel like assumptions sometimes you don't even know you're making them. Like it's just like in your subconscious, something's saying like well, that's the way it is. And like with a belief, you're you're like fully committed to it. So like with an assumption, you can be like proven wrong. It's not like oh wow, my entire life has been based upon this. Like what am I gonna do? But like with a belief that it could turn into that. But I'd also like you to take this, this gift of, a, of these few moments to um, rephrase your question. If you like, if, if, if your the sub-questions and assumptions have impacted your question, take this opportunity to revise your question. Let's just start with what did what did what what did you get out of this exploration of your question through the lens of such questions and assumptions? What was the significance for you? Is that we commit to surface our assumptions, that not state them as fact, but state but realize that this is what I assume to be true, so that you can help me decide whether I should hold on to it or not, rather than asserting them as truth. Or activities that you'll be facilitating for groups. The way you get people into the, the growth zone is the quality of dialogue around their assumptions. Like, why should students be involved in change? That is surfacing a huge number of assumptions that the people you're trying to move um, are making. And 
Um, so, so it's uh, why do schools need to change? Well, a lot of people go to me and say they don't. So, so what are the assumptions about why they assume that? And and so you're unpacking that in a way that doesn't judge is is the, the vital part of what your facilitation role is when you go out in community. It's um, and doing it in a way that lets people go, oh, really? I I really think that way. Um, yeah, it's, but I never thought about that growth as the unpacking of assumptions in, 